We went into El Centro several times from Polanco, but by far the best way was on the Metrobus, which really only takes 22 minutes. It has its own dedicated lane. On the way, we stopped at several piñata shops that had hosts and hosts of piñatas of all different kinds. Reforma is one of the main avenues in Mexico City and the central part is full of park. This is the fountain of Diana the Huntress. The metro bus allows you to get off at stops along the way and we got off at El Ankel to have a look at these incredible paper mache statues called Los Alebriques. <laughs> these skulls were everywhere on Mexican streets because we were there for the Day of the Dead. All along Reforma were hundreds of these incredible statues made of paper mache called Los Alebriques. Alebriques are brightly coloured Mexican folk art sculptures of fantastical creatures. The first Alebriques, along with the use of the term, originated with Pedro Linares. In the 1930s he felt very ill and while he was in bed unconscious he dreamt of a strange place resembling a forest. This incredible skull is made of very, very tiny beads. Alameda Park. Look at this big, um, Arches. What's happening here? Benito Juarez La Patria. The Zocalo or Plaza del Zocalo is the common name of the main square in central Mexico City. Prior to the colonial period, it was the main ceremonial centre in the Aztec city of Tenochtitlan. Every year on the eve of the Independence Day, the President gives an address and rings the bell to commemorate the Mexican War of Independence against the Spaniards in 1810. On the north side of the Zocalo are two churches. Many buildings in Mexico City are sinking. The Metropolitan Cathedral is situated atop the former Aztec sacred precinct near the Templo Mayor. It's hard to miss the uneven cathedral floor when you enter because the building is sinking into the ground. Just outside the cathedral, we found some Indians conducting cleansing ceremonies. Before the Spaniards demolished it, the Aztec Great Temple of Tenochtitlan covered the site where the cathedral now stands, as well as the blocks to its north and east. According to legend, the wandering Aztecs would know where to build their new city when they saw an eagle perched on a cactus. The image did appear to them, but in an unlikely place, on a tiny island in the middle of Lake Texcoco. The Templo Mayor traces the history of Mexico City from the Mesoamerica to the more recent Mexicas. This scale model shows the various stages of the temple as it was enlarged over time. It wasn't until 1978, 
after electricity workers happened on an eight-ton stone disc carving of the Aztec goddess that a decision was taken to demolish colonial buildings and excavate the Templo Mayor. From inside the museum you can see the Mexico City Cathedral in the background. And here we have a wall of masks. Coaxicali were stone vessels used by the Aztecs to hold human hearts extracted in sacrifices. They'd often be decorated with animal motifs like eagles or jaguars. This was the first stone found by the diggers at the site in 1978. It is 3.25 metres in diameter. This is the original coloration of the stone disc based on chemical traces of pigment. This ceramic vessel depicts Tlaloc, the god of rain. These architectural elements covered in stucco decorated the upper part of the temple. Skulls, knives and small figurines were also found. The god of death's liver hangs under his thorax. The liver was associated with the underworld where this god resides. Walking down Madero Avenue, you'll find organ grinders and hawkers of all kinds. We popped in here to see what this exhibition of pop Mexican culture was all about. It had displays of daily life in Mexico City from different eras. We stopped for lunch at this cafe and not only are the walls decorated with the most amazing um, flowers and frescoes but free music is provided by live musicians. And don't forget to say por favor. Sanborns is a large restaurant, retail, pharmacy and department store chain in Mexico. During the Mexican Revolution, troops of Zapata used Sanborns as a meeting place. Thus the Sanborns slogan, Meet Me at Sanborns.
The Ciudad de la Market is the place to go for Mexican handcrafts and folk art. It's located in the historic centre of Mexico City in the southwest corner. It was established just before the 68 Summer Olympics to promote Mexico's cultural heritage. Also in the historic center is the Postal Palace of Mexico City. Its architectural style is highly eclectic. Nearby is the Palace of Fine Arts. The exterior of the building is mostly Art Nouveau and Neoclassical, but the interior is primarily Art Deco. We came here to see the murals of Diego Rivera, the main one being the man at the crossroads. The mural shows the contrast between capitalism and communism. The central panel of the mural shows a worker controlling machinery. It was originally created for the Rockefeller Center in New York. When Nelson Rockefeller discovered the portrait of Lenin and the Soviet Russian May Day Parade, he ordered for the mural to be plastered over. Rivera repainted it in Mexico. This mural shows scenes of Mexican life its characters, its customs and its history. We also found Sikkeiros, and Jose Clemente Orozco. This museum is home to one of Diego Rivera's most famous works, Dream of a Sunday Afternoon in the Alameda. It's a 15 metre long mural painted in 1947. He imagined many of the figures who walked in the city from colonial times onward. They're all grouped around Katrina, the skeleton in women's garb. Rivera himself, as a pug-faced child, and Frida Kahlo stand beside the skeleton. The museum was built in 1986 to house the mural. After its original location, the Hotel del Prado was wrecked by the 85 earthquake. Well, Mexico City has been just the most amazing experience, and yet there's so much more to come.